Hey Brian from RVWithTito.com and today I want to talk to you about running cables through the roof of your RV. Now I know what a lot of you are probably thinking right now. Yikes! You know that is definitely not something that you want to deal with uh, but you know if you decide to uh, install additional equipment on the roof of your RV like uh, solar panels or additional antennas you know where and how you decide to uh, run that cable from the roof into your RV is probably one of the most critical and challenging decisions that you're going to really have to make as part of that project. Now in the past I've gone ahead and run a uh, solar cable and antenna cable through an existing opening uh, such as this, uh, this vent here and that's a plumbing vent that's coming off of my gray tank and it's worked pretty well over the years but uh, the downside is that that location really isn't that optimal for uh, getting that cable into the RV and it's resulted in some really long cable runs longer than I'd really like. Now I've uh, recently been running some new cable uh, from the roof into the RV and this time I decided to do something a little bit different and create a new access point for the cables in the roof and uh, yeah I ended up drilling a new hole into the RV roof and uh, to run these cables and I wanted to uh, walk you through my thought process and show you what I did and why and uh, maybe it'll give you some ideas for your own project. Now I realized that the best possible location for me to be able to run the wires into the RV was going to be through the back wall in my kitchen. Now if I could do that I would uh, be able to get the cables right where I needed them kind of centrally located into uh, an access area underneath the cabinets that I could just run them to all the uh, different locations that I needed to run them as well as uh, you know be able to uh, drill some holes easily to be able to get underneath the RV and run them to my battery bank or my solar charge controller compartment and all of those places. Now drilling from that wall into the roof of the RV would put me just about in between these two vents here, this one and that one, right in the central location, right in the middle of the roof and it would uh, give me a great spot to be able to run uh, cables from either the front of the uh, roof or the back of the roof whereas the uh, previous vent that I've used before was all the way in the back. Now with the microwave removed I was able to uh, get to the panel behind the uh, microwave and locate an area that I could cut out to uh, get inside that wall and ultimately drill a hole up through the roof. What I ended up using was to cut that uh, opening was a really sharp utility knife and the reason I did that was because I wanted a nice clean cut so I could simply just pop that panel back in place uh, when I was done and uh, you know really didn't have a, a big uh, you know scar in the wall where I you know used a saw or something to cut a big hole in the wall. Once I had that opening in the wall I was able to get my, uh, my drill in there with an extension and uh, a hole bit, a hole saw and cut a hole uh, big enough to take a section of a conduit and be able to run it up through that hole. So I wanted a nice uh, round opening that I could ultimately get up in there and uh, make it all the way through to the roof. Now if you have a drop ceiling um, and I don't know if mine's a drop ceiling but there's a there's a cavity in between the uh, ceiling of the RV and the outer shell of the RV so uh, you know I needed a, an extension to be able to get up long enough into that hole to be able to get all the way to the top and ultimately uh, come up through the roof of the RV. Now from the roof I was able to then finish the cut and uh, create this uh, circular opening uh, on the roof that, that I could then slide that uh, conduit through and it created a nice nice fairly tight uh, uh, seal there so I didn't have a lot of gaps around the outer edges uh, that you know I'd have to seal up.
Now I could have used, uh, you know, a, a little solar access uh, opening like this with the cable glands and everything. And I opted not to because you know, this is kind of for, um, you know, a single a single application you know you have two cable points uh, that you could run through here and that's it if you wanted to run anything else in there uh, you couldn't you know without totally uh, taking this off and replacing it with something else so I decided to go with this uh, a larger box that I could add to over time because I'm gonna add some more equipment up here on the roof and I didn't want to have to uh, create new holes or you know replace anything here uh, in order to uh, run additional cables down through this hole. Now I used some uh, some Dicor roof sealant to just kind of put a nice healthy bead around the outer part of that conduit and I wanted to uh, set that inside this enclosure box. And then before I set it on top, I put some uh, double-sided uh, Eternabon tape, you know, just to kind of seal up and uh, give it a nice sticky adhesive so that that boxes stay nice and secure on the roof. Now, if you don't have any of this uh, double-sided uh, Eternabon, you could also use uh, some VHB tape. It'll probably work just as well and uh, definitely will have, have that adhesive quality to keep that box uh, nicely secured to your roof without having to drill any additional screws to hold it down. Then I was able to take that box and carefully slip it over that uh, conduit and give it some nice steady pressure uh, to be able to get, let that uh, die core just kind of seep up through the gap of that opening and create a nice watertight seal there. Now once I had a nice waterproof seal there on the roof uh, with that box, it was firmly in place. I put another bead of, of, uh, of Dicor around the outer edges of that box just to seal it up and create any water from running in there. I also added an additional bead of Dicor around that conduit on the inside of the box just to finish up that seal. Now with the box in place, I was ready to run the cable down into the box and through the opening down that wall in the RV. But in order to do that, I needed to drill a couple of holes uh, into the box to hold the cable and the cable gland, which is this uh, weatherproof uh, just connector that uh, you run the cable through and you tighten it down and it creates a nice little weatherproof seal uh, around the cable to keep any moisture from getting inside that enclosure. So I just simply marked those and drilled a couple holes and ran the cable down through there and ultimately into the RV. Back in the kitchen, I needed to uh, run that cable then down all the way down through that wall to come out of an opening that I cut out that's underneath the cabinet. I had to remove this drawer uh, to get behind here. But uh, my goal was to get all the way down into this wall uh, with that cable. But after a couple of uh, attempts to get that cable through that wall, I realized that there are just a lot of obstacles inside that wall that are preventing me from getting all the way through. And uh, it was a bit of a challenge. So at that point I decided that I was just going to break out my boroscope and, uh, and that's going to help me get through that wall so then I could be able to see better uh, from the inside of the wall. So what I did was I taped the end of the boroscope um, cable and camera to the end, uh, towards the end of that cable and I then used that to kind of navigate my way through the wall and around some of these uh, cross supports that were uh, blocking my path all the way to the bottom. Now a little tip here, what I ended up doing is putting a little bend in that cable so that when I got to an obstacle, I could simply just kind of try to rotate that cable to then get around that obstacle and ultimately I made it out the bottom. <laughs> it was a bit of a little victory. Now I plan on reusing this path uh, to run additional cables so to make it easier on myself next time when I pull the uh, scope back I'm going to attach this uh, yellow wire to it so uh, next time it'll be easier just to pull something through using this. 
Now with the cable uh, through the wall, I was in pretty good shape at this point. Uh, that was really the hard part. And at that point, I could simply just pull the rest of that cable in through that opening in the roof and then uh, ultimately run that cable then through a couple of pre-drilled holes I had uh, on the floor of the RV because I wanted to get the cable under the RV, run it across the RV, and ultimately get to here, which is uh, the small compartment where I've got my charge controller located and all the solar stuff kind of ends up here. And I'm gonna be redoing this uh, compartment in another video and I'll be sure to share all that stuff with you. But uh, yeah, so here are the two solar cables run down from the roof. So now I have a shorter path to get from my solar panels on the roof to my charge controller compartment, which is actually right down here uh, where I'm standing. And the, uh, and the access point uh, that I ran those cables down through is actually right kind of generally in that same uh, location up here directly above me on the roof. So now I have a nice short path to get to my charge controllers and that's gonna really work out well for me in the long run when I wanna run more cable. In fact, I'm probably gonna be relocating that old uh, solar cable and running that through the same uh, box as well. And in the future, I'm gonna be adding some additional antennas and things like that. And uh, it's gonna be really convenient to be able to simply just drill a couple more holes into that, uh, into that box up on the roof and just simply run more cable down that, uh, down that wall. If you have questions, as always, feel free to reach out to myself or you know, some of the other folks in our great community here in, on YouTube, and uh, somebody will be able to step up and uh, answer your question and get you moving in the right direction. Because this is definitely one of the, uh, the challenges that I see and one of the questions that I get quite often, and uh, people say, where should I run my cables and how should I run them? And uh, it's a difficult one to answer because the uh, answer really depends on your specific RV and your familiarity with it. And uh, you know, you really kind of have to just take the time and figure out where things are in your RV to find the best location for your uh, cabling. But if you guys uh, like the video, give it a thumbs up. And as always, if you are new here, please uh, consider subscribing and you won't miss any future videos. Take care guys and I will see you in the next one.